standard or something in the Ottawa paper. I believe there's something in Cornwall. Yeah. 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 So what's the general feedback you're talking about? It's fun. I have. Good positive. Good. Good. Any, any negative comments, but generally I don't hear about the negative ones. Unless there's real, you know, significant issues. On 8 at 3 p.m., uh, I'll call the meeting to order. The first item for discussion is attendance policy. On page uh, two of the document, you'll see a further on attendance policy. Uh, just to give you a little bit of uh, background on this issue, uh, when our auditors were here, uh, they discovered a weakness in our attendance policy time and approval records. Uh, basically, the supervisor signs off on everybody's uh, time cards all the way up through, except for the executive director. Uh, we're proposing that the executive director's time card shall be approved by the chief financial audit, chief financial officer, to eliminate this uh, audit finding in you know, the general audit. I move this. Uh, any discussion? Mark, any any feelings on your part about this? No, nope, that was the recommendation um, of the auditors when they did their exit interview, and it's really not probably as even a big a deal as it. Sounds like yeah. yeah. It's not an internal control thing. Or kind of initial uh, to time cards. We do a part of what here. Have a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. The second item is a uh, item about toll booth staffing, and uh, I'm going to defer to Wade on this. Yeah, I'd like to just have a general discussion regarding our, our toll booth staffing to give you some background on this issue. Over the summer months and into the fall, we've had some uh, difficulty staffing the toll uh, The problem has, I don't want to say fixed itself, the fundamental underlying problem is still there. What we have is we have five full-time toll booth slots filled by four full-time CSEA individuals and 14 temporaries covering the fifth slot. Uh, so on that, I guess we just have a general discussion on it. Go from there. So we really don't have any schedules or anything anything prepared. My understanding is the October schedule is, is set. That we did have enough temporaries uh, to cover the, the, uh, the October schedule. Uh, but this is a problem that uh, will more than likely be back. Yeah, back in April and May, uh, for a variety of personal reasons, we kind of lost our pool of temporary employees. Uh, but now we have 14. I don't know how many we have, actually, but... Or did I hear that wrong? I don't think we have 14. Well, last count, I think we did. We looked at it, but this was back. Yeah. It seems kind of hard to believe that with, with that many temporaries, we couldn't fill all the stock. But it, it is a problem, I guess. It, it was a problem back in the spring. Um, like I said, a few people got full-time jobs and kind of quit us. A few people weren't available, so they couldn't fill on the weekends. And then when the summer came along, the, the summer help was there, so June, July, and August was pretty much okay. And um, since then, we've had a few people join into the pool. So right now, we're okay. Um, five, six months ago, it was kind of at a, at a crisis point. But, you know, we had to scramble around, maybe finding full-time guys in the garage to fill a shift here or there, which we haven't had to do in three years I've been here. So definitely something we need to do. Kind of the whole thing, and we'll keep an eye on it. Yeah. yeah. So again, I just wanted to raise this, um, just bring it to your attention because this had been an issue in the past, and more likely probably will be one in the future. Yeah. And there's probably a number of alternatives we could consider that might make sense if we ever tried to change something, such as adding to the pool of temporaries, or we, we could either maintain the pool by adding to it. Uh, maybe you could hire two full-time people as opposed to one have one of them work three quarters in the garage. Maybe just hire one full-time pool collector and keep it at that so they don't do anything else around here. Um, but we haven't looked at it deep enough now since it's kind of hard <coughs> to you know, come up with any solutions at this point. Is it seasonally where it's more difficult because of the traffic or is it because of... No, well, it's not the traffic or the scheduling. It's people are running their lives all the time. Okay. Yeah. Okay. How many hours does a temp usually... Do they work eight hours only a week? They work an eight hour shift most of the time, both, both days of the weekend. Yeah, we can. So, uh, temporary at least get two days per week? Yeah. Well, 
ships. No, no. Not necessarily. No, not necessarily. But, you know, it would be the max. But I get two ships a month. Maybe they work every every other every third weekend. Oh, okay. So, okay. So, so it's not really part of the schedule. Um, I've got one, two, four people that have full-time jobs that work just weekends. Um, they probably get three to five days a month. Okay. okay. The biggest problem is trying to fill during the week. Like our toll collectors work Monday through Friday. So I have to fill four slots on Saturday, four slots on Sunday every week. Um, my problem I was having is filling slots during the week because these four or five people have full-time jobs Monday through Friday. So they want to work maybe three to five days a month. And to try and find somebody that can work during the week and weekends and not have another job yeah. because it's like to cover vacations or sick time or whatever. Well, it was a graveyard shift. That's tough to cover. Yeah. Yeah. Holidays. 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 Holidays are usually okay because we hire college. We have a couple college back. But they don't get full time either when they're back. Well, you're working on so we're. Okay, yeah. right now. Mm -hmm. So basically, I have an individual I'd be interested in. Yeah. 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 Um, it's a gray area. Um, it's a gray area. Yeah. Well, what I'm hearing here, then, Patty, we went over this before, a, long, a year ago, then. I thought we were putting all full time people in these positions. We shouldn't have this problem anymore. But I'm hearing the same thing as I've been. Are you telling me nothing changed from where we were before a year ago? But why is that? Because it, it seems to me that, that, that we've got an authority here that runs just Monday through Friday for certain individuals. And the Saturdays and Sundays, you know, I always thought we had a seven day schedule here for everybody. The co used to have a seven day rotating schedule, and it probably got changed. Five years ago, before you got here, right, Mark? Yeah, yeah. Five years a week since I've been Yeah, it got changed there. five years. And so the fourth, because they took a toll collector out of there and put it on the grounds. Good. 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 No. No. I don't know. 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 I do they only work Monday through Friday. That's cool. So they're not allowed to swing ships anymore. They don't, you know, they don't do a, a Saturday. No. They, they don't do a Sunday. Only when, only when there's a holiday fall on Saturday or Sunday, they want to work. They work. Um, well, let's say it like it is. Five eight hours, and they work five ten hours. Let's say it like it is. Eight o'clock, five ten o'clock, okay. five four o'clock, five. So my suggestion, Mr. Chairman, is that uh, we have staff bring it up and get some paperwork in here where we can look at how this thing is going to find out if we need to hire two more people. And, uh, you know, part-time heaven here. That's what it boils down to. And I think maybe we should create a couple of jobs, maybe to see if maybe we should be looking at maybe putting that on a rotation basis again and uh, get this thing back where it's got to be and we'll eliminate a lot of these part-time people. Look at the way we used to do it from our urban I thought it was already done. Well, we, we never changed anything a year ago. There were uh, five, well, it was discussed. five full time slots, and there are three maintenance slash relief toll collector positions. They, they were always there. there that were covering those five slots. But they were always there. We knew that. And they're still up. When we, when we changed a lot of things here on this personnel thing, we went through a lot of meetings on that. And we said, this is what we we're going to do, because I was I was very strong on filming full-time jobs here and getting full-time jobs back in the toll booths. And if you needed those three fellows that you got over here trained, that was fine and dandy, too. But, I mean, we went through this. Yeah, that plan, though, was never adopted at the original plan. What finally came out of the personnel committee. Mean, there was a lot of discussion with it, but I don't remember voting on anything. I guess we need to revisit it. Uh, we need to revisit it. Yeah, I think we do. Yeah, uh, if you folks can get us some, even you know, look at the schedule, Patty, the, the struggle you have where they're trying to cover it. Yeah. I know what the struggle is right now. I'm thinking, you know, union-wise, 
that we have that's binding or not binding? No. Well, well we, we have, have to give them 30 day notice. Five, five total positions in our contract with CSEA. Right. Four, four, four. Uh, but that fifth one we have not filled. But what, what my friend's saying is there anything in there that says you you can work, you should be working weekends, whatever, or, or not? Or are they just being selective when they want to uh, work any weekend? Uh, work any weekend. No, I understand that. But I mean, it's, there's wording that we can set the schedule with 30 days notice. Okay. So there's no worrying that says you can work Monday through Friday. Okay. All right. Uh, we've got the ability to switch back or continue as we're doing. Okay. All right. Let's we'll check all that out. We'll meet again on that. You guys have. Our current scheduling is considered a temporary scheduling, uh, although it's five years old. Yeah. Okay. Temporary. Well, there's another bottom line question: Is that what is cost? What is efficient of running your operation? Do they conflict with each other? Is it cheaper, but it doesn't not efficient, or is it efficient? Yeah, and find the bottom. We were here with the union, Sam. We talked about this. Not to interrupt you, excuse me, for that. but just to give you a little bit of insight on it, the union guy even said, you know, we want full time jobs here, and that's what we should be doing: is creating what we need for talking with people. And then if you've got these three guys who already got trained on you for backup, you shouldn't have a problem there. Patty should not even have a headache on that issue. Okay, because I mean, she got three people out there on that issue. If you got six or seven full-time toll collectors, there shouldn't be an issue here. They should rotate and rotate and rotate. You know, just like uh, just like that. Now, if I call them say I can't come in, then Patty should be able to fall back on that one. Unless it's a screaming emergency. But when you're going to pull on these three, and there's three guys trained over here. Okay, and that that was the backup thing. But what they've got here is they've got a pool of part-time people, and they want to run the toll booths the way they want to run the toll booths. Is, is, is that what it is? Yeah, but the guys are working, are comfortable working Monday through Friday. But they're comfortable to working when they want to work, not when we want them to work. It's when they want to work. They don't want to work any weekends. They're not. This is a triple time day, and I've seen them out there on the triple time day. Yeah, it's yeah. 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 Maybe we need to get three or four, maybe seniors trained that could need a job and would like to come and work a couple of days a, a month for extra money, you know, instead of using kids that don't really, you know. Right, one of the problems I have is I've got five complaints this month on that third book. I've had retirees come in looking to want to work five, six yep. days a month, yep. but when they find out we're paying seven twenty-five an hour, they go, oh, never mind. Well, that's what I'm saying. I'd rather have a good crew of part-timers and give them a decent wage. Okay, they're not giving them any benefits. You're not paying them any of that stuff. So you could afford to pay them 10, 12 bucks an hour. Really. Because you're not paying me other bennies on them. That's what I'm saying. Right. I think it's a good issue to look at. Good, good meeting on that. Yeah, we'll look at vacation coverage and all that. Yeah, I'll you know, we'll we'll get some answers. Yeah, but, uh, you got it, because if you don't, Steve would be all upset. But yeah. he thinks we're after him now. Yes. Like you said, Sam, it's not all money. There's a balance between operating efficiently. Oh, absolutely. And having yeah, called by people in this bunch of spend. Yeah. 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 We'll get some numbers around that and have that uh, ready for the next meeting for discussion. Okay, so the last thing I want to mention, uh, just to keep you up to date, Wade, Sam and I have uh, met several times on your evaluation where I would say a little more than halfway through the process, we tend to finish it. Good news. Yep. Yep. Good news. Uh, you know, I'll get the other deal there that he's involved in. After his friend's job over there. <laughs> I remember this week I'm going to be Canadian breakfast. <laughs> wow. Well, I, I was impressed. <laughs> that, uh, <laughs> I was impressed that you responded so quickly. I read that paper and I said, 
Well, if somebody's going to pop a cork over this when they see it, you had a response the next day. The funniest part was, that morning in my office in Potsdam, I was told the whole story about this. And I said, okay. Two o'clock that afternoon, I get a call from Wayne. He said, you hear the latest rumor yet? And I said, no, what is it? <laughs> he told me about this. I said, oh. But I hadn't said anything to him because the person who came in to me with it, you know, just wanted that book of information. So I just kind of went around over my shoulder and didn't even worry about it. So then it, then it comes back the other way. And then I said, this is good. Then next thing I know, Josh got it. So I went out there. Uh, if there's no other business, I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. I wanted to say something, though, since she's got a sore. Yes, okay.